Hello, welcome to this clip taking you through a, a simple worked example of percentage purity in titrations. Now normally titrations are based on one of two types of reaction. Now you've got acid-base neutralization reactions, or you've got a redox reaction. Now at A level, acid-base neutralizations are introduced in here one, but titrations and redox together, in other words, a redox titration, is not introduced until year two. So in this question, there's quite a lot of information that we have to try to pull out of the paragraph at the top. So throughout the clip, I'm going to be using the information that's in the red box to help me do part A, part B, and part C. Now, the first bit says calculate the number of moles of HCl used in the titration. That's going to need the equation number of moles equals volume times concentration. So notice that they want the volume in decimeters cubed. So that means you've got to convert your units. Now if you notice the units in your question are in centimeters cubed. So you've got to convert them into decimeters cubed by dividing the 28.65 by 1000 to turn it into centimeter, sorry, decimeters cubed. So that's 28.65 over 1,000 is going to be your volume. So notice I'm not applying significant figures just yet, as I'm not being asked to do so until part C. I've just realized I have forgotten my units, so I need to put them in. Sorry about that. So you might, almost, uh, oh, sorry, you might also have noticed that the little n uh, in front of the HCl was put there. And I didn't explain what that was. That means that there's a number of moles of something. So if you put a little n in front of something, that means the number of moles of that thing. So if you're doing a calculation, so number of moles is little n HCl. So for part b, it says uh, calculate, uh, sorry, using the equation from question one, I beg your pardon, equation from question one, Calculate the number of moles of NaHCO3 used in the titration. So this gives me this stoichiometry of the reaction. And what that means is the mole ratio. So because I know that a hydrogen carbonate will react with a, an acid to make a salt, uh, water and carbon dioxide, it's quite straightforward. Now because the acid is what we call um, monobasic, in other words, it's got one uh, acidic hydrogen it can give off in the HCl. That means that the mole ratio between the base and the acid will generally be a one-to-one. -one. So we already know what the number of moles of HCl is because we calculated it in the previous question. Now, if you look at the equation, like we just said, there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So that must mean that the sodium hydrogen carbonate must also be 2.865 times 10 to the minus 3 moles in this particular titration. Now if we go on to part C, it asks you to calculate the number of moles of NaHCO3 used in the original solution. Okay, now if you think about the titration we've just done, we've used 25 centimeters cubed in that titration. So in that titration, there was 2.865 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. 25 centimeters cubed goes into 250 10 times. So what I must do is multiply my 2.865 times 10 to the minus 3 by 10. So that means that in my original 250 centimeters cubed, I had 2.865 times 10 to the minus 2. So that's 10 times the number of moles. So the mass of the pure sodium hydrogen carbonate in my original sample, from which this 250 centimeters cubed original solution was made, must be moles times molar mass. So that gives me 2.41 grams. So now I've worked out the mass of NaHCO3 that's present in the 3.15 grams of impure sodium hydrogen carbonate, which I'm just going to draw your attention to up at the top of the screen. So if that's my mass of impure sodium hydrogen carbonate, and 2.41 grams of that is pure sodium hydrogen carbonate, 
it should be quite easy to work out percentage purity from here. So you divide one by the other, multiply 100 by 100, and that gives you 76.5%. Now they wanted it to three significant figures, so that's your second mark in part C. Okay, so thanks for listening to this. Hopefully it gives you an idea of how to do this type of question if it comes up in future. And until next time, thanks a lot and see you soon.